David Wong of Cracked has written a brilliant piece called How America Lost Its Damn Mind and How Trump Became a Candidate. There are three categories of people who are die-hard Trump supporters. One are the racists and white nationalists. The other is the over-60 crowd that was indoctrinated by Fox News for the past few decades, for whom fear and dog whistles have worked powerfully on. They are actually doing fairly well financially for the most part thanks to the financial boom of the past, where they made a lot of money and are well taken care of. However, they see a lot of things happen to the younger people around them in the world and are scared. They are also the most socially isolated without a social network. The rest of the people are people that live in rural areas. David Wong and a few other authors pointed out that hilljacks, rednecks, and other slurs on rural Americans are the last acceptable group to stereotype and make fun of. I left the country for cultural reasons and moved to the city because I always felt like a social outcast there, though I really did love living in the country. I have not been back or paid attention to what's been going on there. They seem to have it just as bad as hyper-segregated people in the city. They are viewed as uneducated, racist, inbred idiots. They aren't really consciously racist to black people who live around them and act like they do. They hate city blacks. Actually, they hate the city in general. TV has taught them, just as it taught me, that cities are nothing but sin, crime, and pollution constantly. Lazy blacks on welfare shooting each other up for drugs, and wealthy elites running the world. Cities are the whore of Babylon, and the country is much more about God, guns, and wholesome hard work. Church is everything. Even though pollution per person is lower in cities because the population is higher and things like public transit is more used. Welfare is a mythical concept that hasn't really existed since the 90s, and middle class people are much more likely to do drugs than poor people as drugs aren't really cheap. For decades post-World War II, rural folks have been a proud, self-sufficient, and innovative people, or so they perceive. In the Cold War, the government spent a huge amount on infrastructure out in the rural areas to establish a robust and protected supply chain for military strategy in the case the country was hit by an attack, and another part of the country could supply for those losses. With the fall of the Soviet Union, that, like the space program and other government spending, lost a ton of urgency and sway. NAFTA actually created more jobs than it lost. Unfortunately, it was all high-tech jobs that the average factory worker wasn't trained in, and cities ended up getting most of those jobs thanks to the high concentration of educated people, and towns went belly up. CAFTA and other really bad free trade programs went through killing jobs even more. States stopped viewing helping Americans out with college as national security as well, and higher education had cornered the market with no attempt to negotiate down the cost of schools, leaving the choice of lifelong debt or no job. Prior to NAFTA, the system was simple. National security ensured that each small town had a plant or industry that ran the town. Infrastructure was maintained because it was essential for military. Good union jobs without any college was available, and people could make a comfortable living there. It was hard work and it wasn't easy. You had to be a semi-self-sufficient jack-of-all-trades and weren't a real man if you didn't know how to also hunt, fix a truck, and put up hay, and maybe some other skills. Sadly, they didn't realize just how dependent they were on the government, and when technology changed and the Cold War ended, the government stopped funding infrastructure and many small towns collapsed. Capitalism went crazy. America drank its own capitalistic, self-sufficient, anti-government Kool-Aid, and people from rural areas believing it the worst, and without a large amount of people around them to have their ideas challenged, these ideas stayed with them stronger and firmer than ever. And they got what they wanted, less government. Technology and automation lost the rural areas even more jobs than all the free trade agreements combined. High-tech industry was so much cheaper than a factory in every small town. Logistics and transportation just made it natural and cheaper to transfer everything to the city. Competition replaced resilience and redundancy. Sadly, being a person in the rural area feels incredibly hopeless. Suicide and heroin and meth abuse are sky high, and people most likely to vote for Trump are people who identify as Christian but don't actually attend church regularly. The more isolated and culturally Christian you are, the more likely you will support Trump, the only person who at least acts like they care about you. Sadly, technology isn't going to go backwards. And unlike the city, where the service industry is replacing a lot of blue-collar work, if no one can spend money on service industries, there is no money. Even farming is being taken over by corporations with automated labor. And the ones that aren't tend to be immigrants. And while white people don't actually want those jobs, they still see immigrants as taking jobs. Higher minimum wage may help out to around $10 to $11 per hour, 
But unless it's a living wage based on cost of living, companies won't find it worth to stay in rural areas. The only real way to help these people is the best way found to help First Nations people with no industry or good jobs. A basic minimum income is really the only surefire way. This unfortunately goes completely counter to their self-sufficient mindset, but basic minimum income stimulates the local economy and allows them to have a service industry and also allows people time and resources and breathing space to innovate. But trying to explain this to them is like convincing them that 666 is actually the best for everyone, even though socialist and labor rights movements formed initially in many rural regions. They don't realize that the massive government spending was pretty much the only thing that, for defense reasons, allowed them to live in small towns and transition them from subsistence farmers to the middle class. And yeah, it was a lot of hard work, but without the government spending, their way of life is dying and fast. Trump has tapped their anger and directed it at the wrong people. But when no one else is talking about you and one party seems to care more about blacks, Mexicans, and Muslims than they care about you because there are serious injustices, they often go for the other party, even if it's voting against their own self-interest.